just showing you. All right, so this is a demo that I took the skin off. I took the branding off so we could bring it out today. Uh, and the basic this idea... It looks like a wallet like the... It looks um, like a normal wallet, right? Like any like sort of... iPhone wallet. That's right. The Apple wallet. Um, now, I see you have a Starbucks card with 26,000 points on it. Yep. I see a Delta Sky Miles. So you can C1 see on Metro the right-hand side, they don't have Starbucks, right? So no Starbucks. Let's say we want to hit receive, and they're going to bring up some sort of code. This could be anything, NFC, sure. but we just use QR. And the left-hand side, we want to say... Uh, actually, we don't want to do send. We want to do pay. And then it's going to bring up a camera. And you can't see this on the screen, but I'm actually just going to scan the right with the left. Actually, you can see that. Now, here's the first thing that you'll see that's kind of neat. It says, what asset do you want to send? Mm. And uh, the right-hand side doesn't have Capital One, so I'm going to send some Capital One rewards. I'll send 50 of them. I'll hit OK. And that's it. And you can see the Capital One rewards mm. popping up on the right-hand side. Now, what's noteworthy about that is... That transaction did not go through some sort of point bank system. These are two different wallets connected to the network, just like two different Bitcoin wallets might be connected to the Bitcoin network. And there's an asset on that network called a Capital One Venture Reward Point. And it was sent from the first wallet user on the left to the wallet user on the right. Got it. Uh, and if I switch over, if you switch over to my desktop view, yeah. uh, you can see this is the actually underlying blockchain. If you look at this transaction here, you can see that Devin sent Adam this asset ID. You can see they're the same asset ID. Yep. Negative 50 plus 50. And you can actually drill in, and this will look familiar to engineers that have looked at blockchain.info, Bitcoin network. This is just the block, raw blockchain data. Only here, instead of Bitcoins moving, we're actually moving reward points. So this is, uh, these wallets have private keys which are signing transactions. So when the first wallet sent the Capital One points to the other wallet, what they actually did is they have a key on the device and there's a key in the cloud as a backup. And the key on the device is signing the transaction and basically saying, go into my little box on the blockchain, my account, yep. take some of those assets out and push them to this other. So a blockchain is a push model. Yep. There was no, hey, I want to authorize into some master system, nope. draw down. It was just a peer-to-peer. -peer. Uh, the closest analogy is, oh, my wallet's over there. The closest analogy is if I hand you cash. Yep. Right? I just, here's 10 bucks. Yep. And that's your that, number it. on it. Yeah, that's it. It's a, it's a bearer instrument. In yeah. other words, the ownership is defined by control and control in this realm just happens to be through cryptography. Right. So let me show you a second, uh, a second little demo, which is, let me pop over. And if you pull up the, uh, the desktop again, I'll open up a Starbucks terminal and say we want to buy an iced coffee. Sure. Uh, and let's say, it's let's say we 80, buy it. It's $84 now here in San Francisco <laughs> for an iced coffee. Uh, okay. Well, we oh, can sorry. Do, I thought it was Phil. We, <laughs> we can do $84. Okay. So yeah. check out. That's, that's a little ridiculous. That's not until 2021. Right. Um, now, if Isn't you, it amazing that people are lining up at if Phil's for $6 If you could picture in coffee? picture, not the phone I yeah. just said it, that I prepared to do, yeah. but the other phone. There it goes. There Boom. There's okay. the other wallet. So now. Look at this. We're putting together two different screens here. Now, yeah. It's pretty, it's pretty, pretty cool. legit. Now, pretty if legit. I go to Try pay, uh, I will scan okay. and it'll Boom. say, you know, paying $84, $84 and I can hit pay. Me. Good. And it's just using dollars. Okay. Yeah. So that was, that wasn't that exciting. But let me do it again. And this time, let's do something more reasonable. Let's do like $4.50, okay? Got it, okay. Now, do you see, yep, you see how I only have $4 in this yep. wallet? But I do have these other points. Sure. Right? So now when I go to check out, it says four fifty, And it says, by the way, accepting all these ah. other assets. So now when so I go to- the Sky Miles are that's right. to pay for coffee. When I go to pay- Zoinks. Zoinks. Now, if you see, it says you're paying with, there's a kind of a liquidation preference here. So ah. first it's going to use up my rewards. It's, those are out. Now it's going to switch over to my Sky Miles. Those are out. Now I have a dollar balance that I'm going to pay out of my USD. And when I hit pay... Which is US dollars. Obviously. That's US dollars. Now when I hit pay, all those assets now have been transferred to Starbucks. Yep. And here's one last step. By the way, if you see the wallet. All, I got, I, all my uh, assets are gone because it's just like a bearer instrument. I just handed those over. It just happened yeah, to be digital. Yeah, cleared them out. And unlike a photo, it didn't copy it. It just transferred it. The last step is if you look at my treasury account, which is over here on the left-hand side, this is Starbucks looking at their treasury. Do you see that? You see in their treasury, they have 51,000 Starbucks points, but now they have dollars. Yep. They also have Sky Miles and rewards points, which they don't want, mm. right? They, they so want to they they settle those. They want to click and settle them. So uh, this, let's see. Okay, if I go to Sky Miles, I want back dollars, okay? Um, I see that Delta doesn't have dollars, mm. So let's see, there's Capital One. Capital One does, so we'll do it with Capital One. So here's Capital One. They do have a dollar balance. So if I go to Starbucks and I click Settle here, 
yep. what's going to happen, one, two, three, is they sent those 50 back to Capital One, and in return, they got 50 cents back from Capital One. And you probably can't tell, but this USD balance is now 50 cents less. And finally, if I actually go to... Uh, and we could take the wallet off right now. You take the phone off, there you go. Okay, let me show you a couple things now in the underlying blockchain, which is, you remember that transaction where I used three different assets to pay for Amazing. something? All yeah. in one transaction. So cool. And if I go to Capital One's view of transactions, you can see this settlement less than a minute ago Yep. Uh, with someone uh, for, they gave up uh, 50 cents and they yep. got back their 50, uh, yeah. their 50 uh, points back. And you can see that Amazing. underlying data here. So, so there'll be a, just a totally free-flowing economy across massive uh, asset classes. Multiple asset classes. And you said yeah. in your introduction, here's an open ledger technology. That's yeah. what this is. It's just issuers of assets, whether those issuers are issuing loyalty points, issuing dollars. Is this some issuing... sort of open standard or this is your standard? This is the uh, chain .com it's both, actually. Wow. So we developed this over the last two years, the underlying protocol, which is, it's not Bitcoin, it's not Ethereum, it's a new protocol specifically designed for issuing and trading these financial assets. Uh -huh. And uh, that is open source. Got it. Uh, and then, you know, for developers, we have the ability to use a free version to get up and running. And then for enterprises, uh, we have licenses where you can put this into production. Right. So that's the underlying idea. So this is a really simple demo, but, you know, the, the real point of it is we think assets should just move like data. And whether it's iPhones, whether it's terminals, other types of uh, uh, back-end infrastructure, it should just move around as freely as data, and we shouldn't have siloed proprietary systems that yeah. can't simply move assets around. Hey, everybody. Let me talk to you about an important topic for my e-commerce and transactional startups out there, and even the big businesses. You are dealing with something that is horrible, the decline Everybody who is in e-commerce deals with declines, and that's when a customer's bank refuses a charge. It happens to the best of us. It happens every day. It happens every hour. And there's many reasons why it can happen. Somebody could have insufficient funds, maybe an expired card, or they entered the card number wrong. All these different reasons of why you could get a decline. And declines can hurt your bottom line. So here's some tips to reduce your decline rate. Number one, Keep the customer payment info current, especially if you're in a subscription business. This means on a regular basis, knowing and informing people that their card is going to decline at this point in time. And you have to have to collect those security card codes like AVS and the CVV numbers. You know, the one on the back, the one that's written but not raised. You know what those things are, those security codes. You have to get those. And the Braintree platform is the one that makes all of this easy. All of my startups use Braintree. And it's just so easy to do all this if you use Braintree, which you can visit braintreepayments.com slash twist. Go ahead and visit braintreepayments.com slash twist. And they will take care of all this for you. You can click on a control panel and start collecting those AVS and CVV numbers. And you can opt into Braintree's account updater, which auto prompts merchants and customers to keep payment info current. Like I was just talking about, you have to have a system for keeping the information current. You want to solve declines and you can solve the declines with Braintree. All of my startups use it. Everybody loves it. You drop in some code and you're up and running instantly. Go to braintreepayments.com slash twist, braintreepayments.com slash twist. It is a great product. I fully endorse it. All my startups use it. Let's get back to this amazing program. Thank you, Braintree.